Welcome back, everybody, or welcome for the first time. Either way, I hope you guys hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're watching or viewing this for. We have a fun one, and I don't need to say a whole lot before this. It starts off with some heat. I'm talking about I get a live reading from an actual psychic, you guys. I'm going to read her little bio that she sent me. Uh, this is Allie Westrick, and she works with... You guys remember the Apex Paranormal crew that I had on? Uh, she does a lot of work with them. And so, Allie has been immersed in the paranormal world since she was a small child. She began to see and speak with spirits at age five. And it didn't take long for her family to realize that she was psychic. Allie had dedicated her entire life to studying the paranormal and using her gifts to help others. She's been a professional tarot reader and paranormal investigator for the past 11 years. She is a member of Apex Paranormal and uses her psychic abilities to conduct walkthroughs of haunted locations in the tri-state tri area, most notably Beatty Mansion in St. Joseph, Missouri and Vail Mansion in Independence, Missouri. Additionally, Allie has worked in psychic fairs in Arizona and Missouri and was on the 2017 and 2018 annual Psychic Predictions panel at Aquarius Books in Kansas City. She has also featured on several paranormal podcasts. Allie owns and operates her YouTube channel, Eleven Messenger, where she vlogs about her paranormal experiences. Uh, there you go. In a nutshell, that's Allie. This was a really fun episode. We got deep and personal into some of my life and some reading and... Uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm excited for you guys to uh, listen to it and check it out. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And uh, oh, let me give uh, shoot. Let me find out how you guys can follow her. I should have done this uh, earlier. This gives you a minute, guys. Pull out your phone right now. Okay. Go to Instagram and type in. Go hit the search button and hit A L I E D U B. Ali Dub. Follow her on Instagram. That's it, everybody. Boom, schlock, boom. Here we go. Welcome to the In Talk Podcast. Well, no topic is off. Now, here's your host, my daddy, and Roy the Soul. Thank you for coming to the In Talk Podcast. Boom, schlock, boom. In three, two, take a deep breath. That's for me, not you. I'm nervous <laughs> as hell. One. <laughs> Don't be nervous. We got Allie, the psychic medium, and she's about to do a reading on me. I am. You ready? I'm ready. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, do you want to start off how we do? I, I gave you my old wedding band. Yes. And I will tell you guys right now, because we just obviously turned the microphones on. Before we started, she was already telling me things. W and it was blowing me, blowing my mind away about. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, holy cow. <laughs> crazy. So. So as I was saying, you're a little bit harder to read. I'm harder to read. Let me, I'm going to turn your mic up a little okay. bit. Or you can get, can you get closer? You can move this thing around. Is that better? Sorry. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. I'm harder to read. You're harder to read because you're a skeptic and you're a skeptic for good reason. Um. I don't even know where to start with you because <laughs> you're you're on this journey of the soul. So this life for you is particularly a little more complex. You're trying to find yourself spiritually in a lot of ways. And the root of all of your problems based in this life, in this ego mind, um, is because of this. You need to kind of correct and find yourself spiritually. So all of your other issues won't go away until you do this. So that's like the root of all of your problems. You have a lot of your heart chakra, your heart is, I would describe it as having a lot of weeds around it. You've grown those weeds over time. Everything has started in your childhood. I used childhood. to smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, <laughs> that might be part of it. Um, so all of your issues, all of these weeds started growing in your childhood. And I won't go into your issues with your father, but damn, there that's that's where everything has started for you. That's where you started 
bottling things up and kind of taking a very hard look at the world around you because that's when you started not to trust it. And that's when your skepticism um, started as well. The very beginnings of it, we'll say. It was very (laughs) small, but yeah. So until you resolve those issues that you have with your father. He's dead. I know. (laughs) You're going to have to, you're going to need therapy you're going to have to work. And I know you don't want to do no, that. No, I do actually. I do want it. I do. I want to try it. You're afraid, though. I don't know. Here, okay. I can try and tap into your dad if you want. But let's do this part first. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, you're on, this, you're on this path to kind of get right, get yourself rebalanced, recalibrated. You're running into all these obstacles because... You've changed so much even from when you were married. You're not the same person. You've evolved since then, and you're still trying to find yourself. I guess what I'm really trying to spit out here, though, is that all of your relationship issues, which don't seem like they would be spiritually based, actually are. So you will find your happiness once you find where you kind of belong in this world. And I feel like that's why you started all of this, your podcast and everything, to voice out everything internally. It's kind of like a journal for you. Mm -hmm. And it helps heal you. It helps cut away those weeds. So, your father. Wow. Did he like have a heart condition? Oh, issue? yeah, uh, I believe so. I believe he died from a heart attack. Okay. He had a fairly youngish age, you know. Yeah, uh, but he seemed very kind of cold. That, like, would, that would make sense. He was around, but at the same time, he wasn't around. Like, almost mentally, he was kind of always somewhere else. But he had high expectations and high hopes of other people. So he's hard to connect with. Not a very emotional person. I feel like he kind of bottled things up within his heart too. And that's why he had a heart issue. Kind of like you have a heart issue. (laughs) Um, You're looking for that love and acceptance. I think sometimes you might seek it out in others. But that's something that you're going to have to find within yourself. Do you want to ask me questions about that? Anything about that? Um, hmm. No, I mean, you, I mean, you make some good points. I do, I do have a, yeah, a lot of weeds around my heart. I would say, and I'm searching. Yeah, th- yeah, you've touched on some things. Um, it's hard for me to talk, <clears throat> not difficult emotionally or anything to talk about my biological father. I just, I never knew the guy, really. I mean, he left me when I was like four or something like that. So. Never really knew him, but it makes sense that I would have, when you say that I started bottling things up and started getting skeptical and not trusting shit when I was like at a young age, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not having that father figure and him being a very emotionally disconnected to be able to leave. Yeah. 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 That makes sense when you say, yeah, like I said, I know nothing about him, but if you say he was, yeah emotionally not there or cold or whatever that makes Mm -hmm. sense like who because yeah i've struggled i really struggled that when my son was around the age when i got left by him you know that's when that when the struggle was really like i started really thinking about him about my father or whatever just because at that age you know it's like how did how does it how does somebody leave a child that's just filled with life and love? Like that's all like I would come home and my son would just daddy and just run at me and mm-hmm. jump at me. He's like, how do you leave something like that? Now, whatever your problems are with, with your baby mama, whatever right. kind of baby mama drama you got, like, okay, move out. But still like, I don't know. I don't know how somebody, I don't know, but, but men are different, you know, DNA wise and, uh, evolutionary wise we're just we're just some of us built different you know i don't know we don't have that maternal instinct some of us have a paternal one but right all true yeah but yeah i don't really have any question i don't know (laughs) okay 
Not about him or whatever. Okay. Like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. That's all right. I'll let you absorb some of that. And if you have more questions, you can feel free to ask me. Okay. Uh, I do. I was wondering about more when you were talking about my ex-wife, about some of that stuff. You seem to be kind of. She's easier for me to hone in on. Okay. Her energy's a lot more projected and more out there, so I can actually grasp onto it and read it. Yours is very internalized and very walled up, so it's hard for me. The more close you are, it's harder for me to pull more detail, whereas hers is more open and I can grasp it. Okay. Well, I think she's cold as fuck. Mm -hmm. The exes. <laughs> she is. She almost, I, she almost, I almost, oh, I was so close to being able to sue her. <laughs> today uh she tore off she like sped off with me still like giving my son a hug goodbye in her car and like almost ran my foot over it, she the door was still open when she sped off just uh this morning that happened this morning dude yep I, <laughs> we're not good we haven't been good in a long time bro we haven't been good in two years <laughs> well no last year we were good up until uh uh october september october we were good until september october of 2020 when she works on her anger she'll come back around i don't want her to come back i'm done like i don't i, I want things will be things will be different in a few years i'm you know what no no not <clears throat> like you guys getting back together oh I'm no no I, I i i i yeah okay well i mean yeah maybe yeah never say never but yeah I, 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 I don't, you know, I, I'm, I can't check back with you. I mean, I could check back with you in four years. <laughs> to see yeah. What, I, tr <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I'll check back. Mark the timestamp this shit <laughs> four years from now. I'm going to tell you, I still am uh, trying to keep my distance. from her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So is that my reading? Yes. So far. Okay. So far. Now what? Just ask me whatever you want to ask. All right, now yeah. have the, now just hang out, kick sure. it. Sure. How long? Uh, so you are a psychic medium. Yes. What exactly? So you do tarot card readings. I do. And you do uh, remote viewing. Remote viewing. What's that exactly? Um, it's when it's uh like when Elijah. I work for Apex Paranormal. It's when he contacts me and says, "Hey, we have a case for you. You know, what can you tell us?" And so I'll be in my living room and then I'll hone in on that, that spot, usually a house or some location. And then I just start writing down everything that I can see in it or what's going on with it, the activity that's going on. Oh, in from it. your house. Yeah. That's why it's called remote viewing. Yeah. Wow. But there's remote, remote viewers work for the FBI. I mean, they. Really? Yeah. And there's my, I've been told that what I do technically isn't remote viewing. It's just um, clairvoyance. Uh, but I see it as remote viewing, but there's people that can be in their living room and then can remote view to Africa or somewhere across and then say everything that's going on. They can see what's going on in Africa at that time. And then that can be, that can be verified. Yes. That's why the FBI uses remote right? viewers. Yeah. Is that where, uh, the men who stare at goats yes. came from that yes. project? Yes. Wow. Was. But they still use remote viewers. I'm not surprised. Why not? Like, I, I, yeah, people sometimes will scoff at cops going to a psychic to help find a kidnapper or murder or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why not? Exhaust. Every, you have no idea. Like everybody, not everybody, but there are so many people out there that think they have the answers. Right. But you don't. There, right. You don't. This world is just, you don't know. You don't know that there's. A dude that names Jesus that's going to meet you at the gates when you die or you're going to go to hell or you don't know that there's a multiverse. I mean, you don't know if he just shuts off. Mm -hmm. You don't know if this is a simulation. You have nobody knows, but there's so many people like, oh, I know. I'm an atheist. I know that there is absolutely nothing. Oh, I'm I, I'm a Hindu. I know it's, you know, everyone has the answer. Right. That's the thing with this type of work, though, is that you always have to keep an open mind. And I see things all the time that I never saw or knew before. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm still a human being. And even though I can see into some things, I don't know everything. Right. I never will until I die, you know. And I do believe in afterlife just because of my lifelong experiences. 
But as far as you're dealing with other dimensions and yeah. other, I mean, you can't wrap your human brain around it. Different timelines. There's different parallel universes. There's yeah. all kinds of things that yeah. science is now proving. Yeah. And yeah. I, th I think that's why um, even police and stuff are using more psychics because thank goodness for the paranormal shows. It's like this whole world has become a lot more accepted and opened up so they don't feel so weird asking uh, for help with things. And why not use their help? Even if they get 50% correct on locating a child or something, why not use that? Exactly. So. Use every little thing you can. Um, yeah, that's so funny you're saying uh, parallel universes and time splits. I was just thinking about when I was, almost got my foot ran over this morning. <laughs> I'm like there's a parallel like at that instant it split off it did it split off where once one spot i did get run over my foot yeah. <laughs> did get run over and it's crushed right now i'm in a hospital right now i just got my x-rays back like i'm probably not gonna be able to walk for a very long time we're gonna have to put it together like humpty dumpty and i'm just like oh but at least i get the sewer and i'm gonna yeah i'm taking her ass to court the kids are gonna be mine all the time ah. right and i would have been not can i would have been canceled been, today been postponed. <laughs> yeah postponed, postponed. <laughs> but you would have seen it coming yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh but unfortunately we're stuck on this plane of existence where that did not happen and uh, yeah and but you I never know on which one's day. gonna be there's no right path. There's just a, a path. path. Correct. Right. Yeah. And it's constantly splitting. I mean, so right. there's no way to keep track of that. Just constantly. Yeah. All different dimensions. Yep. All different. So, I and mean, you believe in an afterlife because why? I would. Say, I was going to say because you're talking to these entities or spirits are viewing things but i guess that wouldn't necessarily mean it's an after afterlife but it's just your consciousness taking a, a form energy can't die so energy like i think of like an ice cube you know water can freeze water can evaporate if you heat it um it can turn very very small but it doesn't go away it just transforms and that's how human consciousness is it just leaves this body. And then it becomes not human consciousness, yeah? It's right. just consciousness. It's just, just consciousness. consciousness. Right. Hmm. You I'm need to study more near-death experience stuff. I think you would really like it. Actually, I have actually kind of been... Lately? Li like just, yeah, like very, very, very recently was uh, watching just videos last uh, the night before last night going down some YouTube rabbit holes. Good. And the NDE channel, have you... The near death experience. No, I no, I haven't seen okay. that channel. But um, there's like a, a documentary on. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is what got me hooked onto it. Uh, our consciousness doesn't die right when we die. Like it's still, like our our consciousness in our brains is still going after our heart is stopped working. It's yes. still like we're still going. Like the, I don't know how long old this documentary was, but they were saying yeah, they're like it can be hours. It can be hours that you're still conscious after your your heart's done, like after you've been pronounced dead. Mm -hmm. Like your, your consciousness can still be active somehow. A lot of times when people have near death experience, they can be in both places. They can be in their body and out of their body at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like a split reality. And then when they're out of their body, they can see 360. They experience things 360 degrees, which is hard for the human mind to I understand. It. But that's how it is. It's like you can still hear and see and feel. Mm -hmm. And basically, you can go wherever you direct yourself to go. Okay. Which leaves some interesting questions on haunted locations and things like that. It does. Yeah. That brings up a lot of different ideas. It's always a wormhole. <laughs> it's like a never-ending. <laughs> so, I mean, with that, with that theory or idea, you could just... Your afterlife is your existence of whatever you want to make it. Like if you, if you're a Christian and you're just staunch believe in Jesus and God and heaven, your your energy and your consciousness will kind of push you towards that direction. You think is that what you're saying? And then, but if not, like even if and then say if you're if you're hardcore into simulation theory, maybe you die and then you get snapped, brought back to life, quote unquote, when you're in this world again, but it's slightly different. I think that is certainly a possibility. Yeah. I believe in possibilities. Yeah. 
like flat out. <laughs> um, and there's people with different religions that see like Buddhists and so like they mm -hmm. see their own afterlife reality. That's what they, in, that's their intent. That's what they believe in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all semantics either way. When you talk about Christianity or other belief systems, I, mean, I just, because so many, that's at the forefront of the American society that people are, that's why I bring it up. But right. I mean, Buddhists too, or, you know, reincarnation, you know, I believe in reincarnation. Okay. And I also believe in angels and demons, and I call them that because that's how I relate to them. That's how I understand them. Okay. Is that just to give them a better name of like good and bad? Yeah. Entities that are yeah. in a, from another dimension interacting with this dimension or? Yes. Okay. And yes. <laughs> there's, that's a, there's a lot there. Um, yeah, go ahead. I got a, lost my train of thought because I got sucked in a little bit. We'll get sucked in and keep going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, um, so demons are uh, definitely more. I would say angels are also prevalent, but they're just really they hang back. They don't really come forth unless you ask them to come forth. Um, and there are a lot of times that accident scenes are where people experience more angels. Otherwise, I've I've had a very small handful of angelic experiences in my life, but I've had far more demonic types of situations where they're more ready to intervene without permission where angels kind of wait for your permission they don't want to mess up your life experience whereas demons are happy to mess up your life experience uh, yeah um so they they tend to be hang out more be more prevalent and then the haunted locations i go to you're either seeing human spirits or uh, darker energies, you know, lower level energies or demonic entities. And are there different levels of angels and different level of, of, of demonic things like, like this evil guy, this evil entity, he's pretty bad, but he's not as bad as like this, like who, and then there's like this, this angel that he's always helping doing cool. Sh I don't know. Is there like different levels of so I, I don't mean, even know what I'm asking. Huh? I mean, in, in the in like Christianity, yes, there are different. I'm just saying in the, in the realms that you yes, in the realms that we're dealing with. Like, I don't know. Do you believe? I mean, so you believe in? I mean, Christians would say that they believe in dimensions too. I mean, if you believe in heaven and hell, that's certainly another dimension. Yeah, I mean, if they would call it a dimension, I'm not really sure. I haven't I mean, been to church I, in a while. Me neither, but they, they have to. What else would it be? Uh, yeah, other, I mean, it's a place. Right. I call it the heaven plane. Mm -hmm. Heaven plane of existence. I've seen it. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I, have, I, don't, I haven't had a near-death experience, um, but I have memories of things, and I have dreams, and it's all very, very familiar, and it's a very beautiful place. I had a, a really creepy dream just a few days ago yeah where i thought it was a a, a demon a, a bad energy running to come inside and i ran to stop the door and we met at the door at the same time to stop each other and i stopped him and it was and i felt like it was an entity of this guy that uh, i just read about dying that i met a few times played frisbee golf. he was on the frisbee golf scene around here and he just died and i just felt like it was for some reason his spirit pissed off and i don't know why he was i don't know i didn't barely knew the guy but it felt like him yeah see the thing is the interesting things about dreams are is uh, that's that's a neutral place for humans and spirits to meet and talk to each other or communicate or have an experience like that so when i hear about a dream like that one to me that feels like something that really actually happened why he was a darker lower level i don't know um but the fact that he came to you and was coming for you is very interesting. And when I hear dreams like that, I tell people to like write them down and see. And then if they have any other experiences or dreams after that, to just make notes of that and then come back to me and ask me about those. That freaked me out. It woke me up. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt it was really real. Yeah. And I also had like a weird dream that led up to that. A bunch of weird shit was happening with, yeah, just weird stuff with yeah i don't know hmm maybe you should sage <laughs> it's in your place <laughs> uh i have this 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 friend of mine that comes over and i have she she makes jokes all the time about this is like 
this street is like some weird portal. Huh. Because there's like all these cats all the time, all around, and there's just like this weird energy and people around. It's just an interesting, this street is just kind of an interesting street. And she thinks like there's just some kind of weird portal or type thing around here. <laughs> Portals are no fun. I've dealt with those myself. But um, it's difficult when you live on a street or something that a lot of times the land can be haunted. Mm hmm for, you know, we live in the Midwest. There's a lot of Native American energy here uh, or battleground type of energy, but even like cemetery energy. Um, it's harder to, you can't really flush out a neighborhood. You can't really like clear or something like that. Much harder to do. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying just in general, this is like a weird. Weird little a weird spot. There's been some weird shit that's happened. Like this, uh, a couple years ago, right kind of right across the street, uh, this guy killed his dad and then killed himself or something like that there was like some kind of murder suicide with like a white like a, a husband or not uh, a father son and like some other chick oh boy there's that's also not lot, good yeah there's also a lot of drugs here too so yeah a lot can contribute to a, a weird baby. energy <laughs> independence, independence. <laughs> we got what you need baby we got what you need we got portals we got math the alcohol <laughs> cemeteries I mean, murder suicide that's right jeez yeah you probably should like you could at least um sage huh well you need some wards up or i need what up wards you need more crystals and things put them in your windows okay in front of mirrors that you have you can do some kind of like symbols and like uh on top of your doors what will this Sigils. do for me just keep your space clearer so you're not getting attacked in your dreams what if i like it well then leave it <laughs> it's up to you yeah I, I personally am not fond of those things but yeah, yeah it makes me feel alive i'm waking up in the middle of the night with my heart rushing <laughs> oh my god <laughs> did i just run into a ghost <laughs> holy shit that was kind of <laughs> cool i mean nothing's gonna happen i mean come on uh things things could happen Allie, ain't, that's, shit that's happening. ain't shit happening to me i i'm <laughs> invincible it? Until bring you're it, not. I'll bring that down. I'll bring that guy back tonight. Are you scared? Oh my gosh. Bring him as a guest. No. Bring him as a guest. <laughs> bring him as a guest. Come on. His name was Jamie. On our last episode of the Apex Chronicles we did on YouTube, mm -hmm. we had a guest. Um, Elijah and Ed sat with a spirit and played cards with it. Oh, yeah? And it, his voice, same voice, kept coming through the box. And they were asking it questions on what it wanted to do when it was playing cards. Unreal. I've never seen anything like that. It was really, it was really cool. That's, yeah, that sounds cool. So technically, you could have a guest. Okay. <laughs> I just don't want to be here for that. You're going to have to do that. Why not? I want you oh, here. No, no, no. I need to interpret I'm for me. I'm not going to draw in. Well, you could get, get a spirit box and see who you can. Okay. <laughs> do you think there's any spirits around here? That, do you feel anything? Is, is my place good? Um, It's not the most comfortable I've ever been in. Oh, my. This is how I determine if a place has something in it sometimes. Um, would I sleep here by myself? If the answer is no, then there's something wrong. And if the answer is yes, then it's okay. I don't think I would feel, feel comfortable sleeping here. But it's not like you definitely have something here. I don't feel that. It is a weird energy. It's, it's very encompassing. Like it's like the whole place. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I want it to be better. So what do I need to do? Yeah. Yeah, you need your crystals and your sigils. What and kind things of like what kind of crystals and sigils? What kind of things? Do um, I need? any of the black stones. So black tourmaline, onyx. Um, I can't even think of all of them. Hematite would work. So the black stones, and you can just put those. They absorb energy, negative energy. They protect. Okay. So yeah. people think it's usually, and you could use any white as well. Um selenite and stuff but selenite is typically for i mean selenite is for clearing and cleaning but it's also for like angelic communication i use those more as communication stones but you could use them for protection as well why are these stones what how do they how collect do they, energy like what how do they work yeah um each crystal has its own energy vibration that's specific to it and that's how People know what to use them for and why they have specific uses. It just depends on what vibration they give out. Pretty interesting. 
It is really interesting. It, when I lived in Arizona, they are big into crystals. I mean, huge. There's crystal stores everywhere because of that. Uh, you say I am a skeptic, but I am open. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> this year, 2021, I'm kind of on this path or this uh, experiment that I'm trying to live this year like this is a simulation. Okay. And so I'm trying, just trying to do whatever I, I think, whatever I want to do, kind of. Just if this is my sandbox, this is my video game. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of do whatever I want. Like, I understand the video game has rules. Mm -hmm. I still got to pay my rent. Right, right. You know, I can still get arrested, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Well, listen, okay. I, I say I think, but I've, I, you know, I, I, I've. So if, I, you're, if you're still seeing that you have to do all these things still, then what are you trying to do exactly? Elevate my experience as a human in this simulation. So take more risks? Or uh, attract more things to you? Just do more things that I want to do that maybe I wouldn't. Uh, something stupid the other day. Uh, I was walking down in the Power Light District. Okay. And it was cold and I had to go across a couple blocks this way, a couple blocks this way, and then a couple blocks this way to get to a spot where I could have just cut through the Power and Light area. But it was, it was barricaded off. Okay. Well, I was like, yeah, fuck this. I'm just going to move these barricades aside, walk through and go the way I want to do. Okay. <laughs> and like that. Um, and I, I gave this example already, but I was with Charlie a uh, week, a couple weeks ago at, uh, at a bar and I'm very introvert most of the time. Like mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't like just talking to strangers and mm -hmm. being like the life of the party kind of guy. But I, I was like, yeah, this sounds fun. Like I want to do this. I'm going to make myself be the life of the party today. And I'm just going to live life and do what I want. I, I talked to every single table. It was packed. <laughs> wow. There was no, it's like there was COVID didn't even exist. This bar, every seat, every table was wow. packed. No one had masks on. I went to every single table, sat with some of them, took pictures with some of them, making them laugh, just having a good time, just doing what I like. What do I want? Just kind of. So it's it sounds like you're breaking your own rules, <clears throat> breaking establishment rules. I've always done that. Like I've always kind of broken like you know like i've always been anti not anti-authority necessarily but anti unchecked authority like <laughs> authority that just says i'm gonna okay. why because i said so well uh, fuck you you need to have a reason you know like, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i am a bit of a yeah okay i guess maybe I, i'm not doing anything different i'm just stepping it up a bit there you go that sounds good for 2021 just don't get run over <laughs> well, I did in a different yeah. timeline. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm very so. You were mentioning earlier about consciousness, mm -hmm. which which was and I've I've been obsessed with consciousness since I was a kid. Good. Just what is it? You I mean you were right earlier when you were saying like I have these weird questions and this intense feeling of what being a human is. I have always struggled with what it is being a human, mm -hmm. like what this human experience, like I'm alive, but what does that mean? Like I see what comes out of my eyes now with like these, you know, yeah. this weird darkness all around your viewing screen. Right. And you're just viewing this weird planet and experience through the lens of this form that you've, that you're trapped in. Right. So people, there are people out there who have older souls. I'm an older soul. And when you have an old soul, you kind of question those things at a young age because they don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to kind of figure it out because you can have memories of things, of experiences when you're that age of a life before or just being conscious uh, and not being in a body. So that's why when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I supposed to be doing? Why am I here? What is this? You know, mm -hmm. what happens when you die? Where do you go? It's all of those things. Um, and so that's just your old soul reminding you, hey, this isn't your first rodeo. And you're here to learn things. To me, that's my whole reasoning purpose for life is just to learn and just to pass on any knowledge that you have. Yeah. And then you graduate and then you can move on to your next existence, your next dimension, your next level of consciousness. Sometimes I'm so ready to move on. I know. 
<laughs> <laughs> I know. I know that feeling. I, so I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm like, just, can, I, can I be done with this already? Yeah. Like, this, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I just, I'm exhausted with this life and with this. Apparently, Earth is the hardest place to live in. It's like mud. And it's, it's hard to feel. It's hard to learn. Uh, experiences are more difficult. It's just, yeah. Is there a reason behind that? <sighs> I don't just know. randomness. I just with uh, with all these dimensions and all these other places, it's just random that some suck and some. I don't. think Earth. I think I kind of have the feeling that Earth was specifically set up as kind of like a school, and then we get sent here sometimes over and over. That doesn't mean we don't. It's get definitely s- a public school. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's for sure a public school. <laughs> I agree with that one hundred percent. But there's other. Um, you can have other lives in other dimensions and other planets and other existences. And then, and then you get into the whole alien life form and then that intertwining with spirituality will start to blow your mind. If you think about that, I, I'm always thinking about it. Look at my shirt. I know your shirt's great. I'm all about aliens, especially right now. It's just, it's exciting right now. It is. It is exciting. There's going to be a lot more coming out with the uh, the COVID nineteen. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> yes, and I'm excited for it because you have all of these go fast videos and Commander Favor and and the the COVID thing where they say they have to re- the the FBI or who's it, the FBI has to release all its information. The government has to release all the information it has on UFOs and aliens. But then last week, I'm talking to a flat earth believer mm-hmm. and he and I was at, and I brought that up to him. He was like, well, if it's coming out of the government's mouth, should you believe it? He goes, I'm not going to believe any whatever it is. I'm not going to believe it because it's coming out of the government's mouth. And we know the government lies all the time. And once they've lied to you this many times, why would you believe anything that comes out of their mouth again? I was like, yeah, you make a good point. They do lie a lot. uh, Yeah, they do. And I think uh, they use a lot of omission. And I think omission is what has been used on us as far as UFO stuff goes. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think there are, I feel there are events coming that they can't omit. And like things are just going to be very obvious. And I think they're trying to, what's that phrase called? Boiling a frog or, you know. Right. That's what they're doing with us right now. And because it, it's so interesting that they attached all of this information to a COVID-19 bill. It's like, why would you do that? You know, why do you need this information out so quickly? Now there's all these higher level people coming out and saying all this. Where were, you know, they weren't coming out years ago. So to me, there's something that has happened. Yeah. There's a reason for this to start to come out now. So that's what I, I'm waiting for a giant ufo to be on my doorstep one of these mornings i am right there with you yeah i I think they're i've been saying that for a while i think they're just giving us like these little hansel and gretel crumbs yes just every now and oh yeah there was a video oh yeah there was another video Mm -hmm. oh all these people saw these lights and oh there's Mm -hmm. this stuff going off the ocean here and off this west coast here the east coast there and slowly uh you know this guy the uh the i think he was working with the russian no uh was it Russia or Israeli? Is is Israeli? Uh, I think it was the Russian. No, it was the yeah. Israeli. The Israeli yeah. guy that used to work with their space program, right? Just came out and saying, "Hey, yes, there are aliens. Trump knows about it. He almost blew the lid off it, but he didn't. And we've been working with them for a very long time. We have a deal with them. The aliens said not to tell the world about them yet because they think they don't think we're ready yet." And also, there is a base on Mars. Mm-hmm. The and humans, the, moon. the humans have been going to, and yes, it's underground, underground and base. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I think the FBI wants to get ahead of the story before they can't, because then it will look like the government's been lying to us forever, and why should we ever believe them? So now that I feel like they kind of have to come forward and say, "Yeah, we've just kind of been sitting on this because." Human beings, there are a lot of human beings that can't handle this type of information. Okay. If people can't. Okay. See, I, see I, that's that's the hard part for me to accept. Okay. I'm like, we're ready. Like, who, yeah, we're ready. We've had the movies. We have the internet. We're ready to see. We're Yeah, okay. We're ready to see aliens. Like, all right. We're ready now, but maybe 
20 years ago or 50 years ago well yeah people would have had their Since minds the internet and there's still people that would still have <clears throat> their minds blown and commit suicide because their whole belief system and structure is just torn apart all right but that's just yeah that's just a broken human it is and you have to well that's your all right well, if you're gonna, but there's some if people you're gonna that commit if you're to, gonna kill yeah. yourself because you thought in mohammed for 80 years and all of a sudden it's you know there's a UFO. it's alf <laughs> <laughs> you kill yeah. yourself well that's on you but, that's yeah, darwin and that's it, it darwin is, working it is. you know you like, have to to ev bye. evolve you have to be open-minded to reach to to evolve and you just have to otherwise you won't survive well is that what's yeah i don't know i we're, we're, we're evolving as a species one way or another yeah whether you want to believe in stuff or not that's true. but yeah as a human being it is to evolve as a human you do have to have an open mind mm-hmm yeah, I, and I, I I believe you. I think there probably will be something happening too soon. There's just too much stuff lately. It's on my list. What, what's a li what's your um, list? Um, I do. Um, so a couple times I have maybe three times. I don't remember. I've been on the psychic panel for Aquarius Books for their yearly psychic nice. thing. So I I would sit down and make out a list of everything. So I predicted COVID and. Uh, UFO stuff was on my list. So I'm waiting for that. I haven't done any predictions, though, for 2020 or 2021 specifically because I don't want to. Why? Too scary? Yeah. It's a, it's a weird time right now? It's a very weird, changeable time right now. I feel like almost anything I could predict could be easily disrupted or wrong or something just because so much is shifting right now. What do you attribute that shift to? I have my theories. I mean, there are tons of theories that it could be. Mm -hmm. People talk about split the earth splitting. and um, I, I don't know. It's definitely a but shift was in there energy a big, with people. Was there a big event or was there something like, 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 the Mayan, like the Mayan calendar? Was it like that type of thing? Or I know recently there was a... Uh, gravitational wave that that hit earth back uh maybe a year or maybe two years ago and it was just you know i don't know maybe two black holes collided somewhere and that shock wave rippled was a ripple and uh -huh. there was a ripple that went through earth a year or two ago i'd believe that so maybe it could be something like that i mean solar flares even affect me so it i mean it could be anything okay. we're living on a on a living planet so like the planet itself is its own being. So it's like anything. And our energies affect the planet. And the planet's energies affect us. Okay. Which what affects one more or the other? Mm -hmm. What's more powerful? The people's energy or the Earth's energy? I would say the... Uh, or I would say the Earth's energy, actually. For now? Or do you think for it For now. <laughs> Good question. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Do we need more black on this Earth so it can... Dark. Soak up all the bad energy. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Just start painting everything black. I kind of see. I don't Mountains th I don't, are painting I don't black. Think, get rid of this dark energy. I don't think the world needs more negative energy. Well, honestly. I meant to suck it up and get rid of it. It's just, just hold it. I guess it doesn't work like that. Like, I'm just spitballing yeah. ideas here. They're interesting ideas. I haven't really thought about it. When I think of crystals and things, I think of kind of my own personal space. Mm-hmm. You know, and when I go into haunted locations, I wear them and things like that. But I don't think of it usually as a global thing. So that's interest. That's interesting. Have you ever messed with psychedelics? No. What are your thoughts on? Uh, I think the whole DMT thing is super interesting, and I do think that people have real experiences with that, um, and and just with any of like the Native American. Uh, I forgot what it's called ayahuasca thank you um with exploration spiritual exploration i do believe that people have real experiences with that and that's a great way to have people open their minds um i've just never done it i haven't really needed my mind to be open any more than it already is we'll put you on another <laughs> we'll put you in that dimension i know in another it dimension You're, I, it's it's that would probably be very terrifying for so me. so i've heard <laughs> that it's pretty crazy pretty like, intense and you and, and so a lot of people what they say is like if you're going to do one of these dmt or ayahuasca is a lot of people ha do have the same come back with the same 
experiences mm-hmm. of feeling of a female presence. Okay. Um, but there's also like you can ask it questions before you go into this thing. Like, why am I doing this? What kind of questions? So she's like a guide. Mm-hmm. Okay. It can be. A, it's it's a, it's a guide. It's a teacher. Oh. It's also a medicine. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's how it's explained. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Um. So I know this guy. <laughs> that was going to do that did DMT once and he was like you know his big question was consciousness. Ah, huh, okay. Strangely enough, coincidentally. And you know he wanted to know what consciousness was and this entity crazy spirit type thing washed over him and showed him what it is, what consciousness really is. And it's not anything that can be explained. Mm-hmm. There's no word in the human language that can explain what consciousness is. It's just the closest word that we can come up with it is omnipotence. Mm-hmm. It's because it's just you're everything and nothing all at once. And you just this this weird flow. You get this weird flow. That and that you're connected what, to everything. That you're just weird. And this is like, this is what consciousness is. This yeah. is what it is right here. And it's just, it's that's what I've heard. Hmm. I don't know. A lot of people have different experiences with all that stuff. Though, so. did, this, did this person have an out-of-body experience? Uh... Somewhat, but it didn't fully, fully go. Didn't fully go. Probably good. Um, <laughs> probably, probably good. This person came back <laughs> instead of stayed out there. Uh, yeah, there's arguments that should have gone, gone all the way there, but his ego wouldn't let him or something. Oh, that happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, you know, when you when you read up and hear these different stories of all these people that take take psychedelics, a lot of them are trying to find trying trying to find that that next dimension or trying to mm-hmm. you know a lot of them come back with with spiritual experiences whatever that is you know they don't attribute it usually to a typical god of any kind but they just a lot of times with like mushrooms mm-hmm. or peyote mm-hmm. or all of this stuff it's always very like spiritual yeah so i'm just wondering like where you stand with like people interacting with spiritual awakenings and spiritual entities if you will while taking these psychedelics that you know mess with your brain i guess i don't have i mean i don't i wouldn't judge anybody on that at all i think that people need to have their own spiritual spiritual experiences to help them get their answers that they need um you know i don't encourage people to do it i think that's something they have to find on their own because there are consequences and risks to things like that too uh, medically at least um so i think i think whatever they need to do and, and they feel okay with and that's mm-hmm. safe for them that you know that's what they maybe should pursue that's up to them yeah but yeah i never tell a client to go do oh i'm not saying that. i'm just wondering what your thoughts are on like is there alternate ways to open these these doors yes. to, to these meditation Ah, meditation. You can, I, I was, you can do it. Yeah, drug free. You can. Well, <laughs> well. Here's the thing. It, it, yeah. Yes. And no. I mean, there's, I mean, yes and no. Creating, it's not the same. It's creating. I mean, there's there there is a a thing I was messing with a little bit called a uh, frequency vi- the frequency meditation where you put headphones in. Yeah. And you get this vibration, this frequency of right. these, and these noises. And there's different frequencies for different things that you want to achieve. Yeah, and yeah. you can. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, the other argument, or not argument, but when, when you say it's drug free, like when you smoke DMT, what that's doing is releasing. Uh, DMT is already made in, in your body. Inside in your and body. It's just, yeah. And it's, you know, it's in your lungs and in your pineal gland, mm-hmm. you know, the third eye, if you will. Right. And so that's just releasing that. So even meditation, you can get into those conscious states mm-hmm. where you're releasing mm-hmm. that quote unquote drug that's already in you. Yeah. Now, I will say, though, that I am terrible at meditating. I'm working on it. I just started working on it. <sighs> so this has been my experience so far. It's like um, I fall asleep, and a lot of people do when they start meditating. But then what I, I'm i like, okay, well, I'll do a specific sleep meditation. Okay. To I did one to <clears throat> contact my, my archangels or something. It's called sitting with your archangels. So I go to bed, and it's very, very hard for me to fall asleep, like every night. And I fell asleep pretty quickly. And then I was jolted awake. And it happened to be at the end of the meditation where it says, okay, you're now finished. And I missed 
the whole middle part, the whole important <laughs> part. I was like, I went to sleep at the part where it's like, okay, you can feel yourself relaxing and blah, blah, blah. And then I woke up at, okay, it's over. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's really weird. Like, what did I miss? And so I've done it four other times and it has happened each, every, each and every time. Well, it's working for you then, right? I guess, but I don't know what's happening in the interim. I have no, and it's weird because I don't dream. I don't have any memory of it. I'm, and I'm, per, I'm someone who dreams because I wake up a lot in my sleep. So I remember my dreams. Don't remember anything. Really? No idea what's going on. And then I'm like, well, should I trust YouTube videos? And <laughs> who oh, knows yeah. what they're telling yeah, me? Yeah, like, I really getting, don't know. You're getting hypnotized. I know. <laughs> they're reprogramming me and I don't even know it. It's kind of scary, but yeah. When did you realize you had this gift? Uh, I was really, really young. I was about five. And my parents kind of saw it in me before I saw it. But I was having memories of past lives that were like my memories. Like there was no separation. Uh, wow. Yeah, weird stuff. And then our family moved a lot too. So we, I was living in a different house every year. And we lived in haunted houses on occasion. And then people would say, well, Allie, you're haunted because you're psychic and that these things are attracted to you, which is also true. Because um, they know they can talk to you and know they can, uh, yeah, you can get I can their see message them out. And they can see me sort of thing. Yeah. So they could put me in a house that maybe is like this one that just has a weird energy to it. And then I could just attract something in from that. So. Did it freak you out at all? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You didn't just accept it? Just oh, no. <laughs> we, uh, we lived in this house in Colorado when I was 12. And we hadn't lived there very long. And I, I was like, Mom, there's a husband and wife here. And there was a murder-suicide here. This is like an, a newer house. A really nice house in a really nice neighborhood. And I would hear footsteps coming up and down the stairs all the time. Or I'd hear the TV on and I'd go downstairs and the TV wasn't on. So I hear people talking and chattering. And I always could feel this couple standing at the edge of my bed staring at me. And the only time it didn't bother me was when I had the flu. And they were still watching me, but I didn't care because I was so sick that I didn't care. And I'm like, just... I was like, just go, or, you know, I don't care. You just leave me alone. Um, so I would sleep with my lights on, with my radio on, oh. the hall light on, my door open. My parents' bedroom was right next to mine. So I slept that way until we moved out of there. When you see these, I don't know, what do you call them? What do you call them? I call them spirits. Okay, when you're seeing these spirits... How clear is it? Is it like I would think in the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze kind of translucent? Does it look like that or does it look like me? Like a little solid 3D dimensional person, but you can know it's, you know, right. it's not really there. But, right. It's, or, or it's it, both. I've seen, I've had both. Whoa. So I've seen an actual physical full bodied apparition, which is like the holy grail of seeing an apparition. And then I've, I, when I usually see them, it's in my mind's eye. Like I can look at a spot and know it's there and feel it's there. In my mind's eye, will see the actual projection of it, what it looks like. So my, yeah. The full bodied one I saw was at my sister's house in her basement. I was staying there and I felt very, very uncomfortable. I, I, I couldn't sleep. And I was down there by myself and I was super tired. And I'm like, I, I got this fight or flight feeling and I was shaking. And I'm laying there. I'm like, where's all this energy coming from? And I had a fan down there because I have to sleep with a fan on. And the fan started, like the energy started to die down. And then it would come back up again. And then it would go back down. I'm like, oh, I knew something was going to happen. And then I felt something in the room and I opened my eyes. And I saw an African-American gentleman standing in front of me wearing a denim outfit. And his eyes were bugging out of his head like he had been hung and he had something around his neck and he was staring at me and the most aggressive get the f out of here and what are you doing here and I close my eyes and I'm like I did not just see that and I stayed that way and I was frozen because I was so scared and then I I kind of turned and I was, so I was on my back and then I opened my eyes again and I saw him at the edge of the couch sitting on the couch where I was sleeping on sitting there staring at me and I'm like, I have to get out of here. It was like one in the morning. And I thought, he's not going to let me out of this room. He's not going to let me open the door. 
but I just, I very quietly just got my pillow and my blanket and I walked towards the door and I'm just thinking, please let me out of here. And he did. I was able to open the door and I got out and I went upstairs and I slept on the couch upstairs. Well, my sister. How does that not still freak you out? I mean, that was just, it wasn't that far. I mean, he's still in the house with you, but you're, you're. Do you, you just know that the, he's regulated to one little area? He was, or? he was regulated to that area, and yeah. Sometimes they aren't, sometimes they're not, but I felt like he was on a path, that he was moving on a path to go towards the end of the basement and, and go out. He was surprised to see me. He didn't know who I was, but he did not want me down there. And I, he, So my sister gets up, she's like, what are you doing up here? And I'm like, so I told her what happened, and I'm like, so what's going on with this house and stuff? And she's like, well, we had the Underground Railroad in this area, in this neighborhood. I said, oh, okay, no, it makes more sense. But it felt to me like he had been executed. So I don't know the whole story there. Um, so yeah, that's, the f- that's, uh, that's one of the times I've seen, actually seen something. Um, <clears throat> no, I, you know, I was joking earlier, well, I'm not afraid of them, he can't do anything. But you think, or you say that they, they, these, he, he could have done something. He could have prevented you from leaving. Yeah, they can, they can manipulate energy. And then, and then he's sitting on your, uh, on the couch looking at you. So they're yeah. using your, like your shit that's in the room. Like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit on your couch, even though it's in a, yeah, different plane. But yeah. they can still use well, it. Well, I don't. That's a good question on on plane on where what dimension that was in. So were we crossing dimensions? Was he in my dimension so he could manipulate the energy in the room? I don't know. But and then there's no way for us to go to their realm or their their dimension and, and ma- manipulate shit like you could have tripped him up. I could have. <laughs> you were like, oh do, yeah, do a matrix you. action. Oh, you're pissed <laughs> off. You're pissed off at me. You want me to go? <laughs> Get out of here, dude. Kicked, kicked his butt. You know, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I was you, ghost. Dark. This is my house, terrifying. ghost. You're on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> you are on my couch. Yeah. The ghost actually tried to, you know, like, as a ghost, like, could really try to touch you, or, like, did they actually do physical harm to anyone? Oh, yeah. They can actually do harm. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You heard about people living in haunted houses, and they get yeah. pushed down their stairs, and they get scratches on their back, or they get hijacked, what I call it. Yeah, they're, they jump. They jump? They get in your body, and that's happened to me. Really? Mm-hmm. What does that feel like? Awful. It's like a possession, like a yes. quick. Yes. Really, and it's and it's never a good. No. Person, it's always bad people that do it. It's a bad, lower. Bad, it's a lower level energy. Lower level energy. Those are the ones that are more interested in taking over your body. <laughs> How come? Because they just want to experience. Like, who knows? You don't know. To take it over. So they can have. I don't know the. Because they're anarchists. They're just trying to be crazy. Like, I'm taking Well, they are crazy, but they do move with intent and purpose. Right. I think it has to do more with your soul. But when they're in your body, they can control things. They can do things. They can hurt. You can hurt yourself. You can hurt others. I gotcha. Sort of a thing. Okay. Uh, you were just saying they're with your soul. And then that brings me to a question of, you know, consciousness and soul. Mm-hmm. I guess those will be, are those two separate things? I see mind? them as the same thing. Okay. I just call them. Call yeah. interchangeable with yes. their name. Okay. Yes. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> what what do I I you know, I'm going through shit right now. You uh-huh. know, like I got just uh, just a roller coaster of shit with, with you know, my kids and ex wife and her new boyfriend yeah. and all this other bullshit. Is there anything you can uh help me out with or let me know like hey do like your future holds that like other than in four years i'm going to be better with her well you're on this path alone right now so until you kind of are we not always on a path alone you can have others kind of helping you out on your path what i mean by alone is um not romantic relationships tend to mess up spiritual journeys i've noticed so if you're on the spiritual journey, you you might have issues in romantic relationships or having a successful romantic relationship. That's going to be something that you're seeking, which is something more long term or stable. Um, not that you can't be involved with people, but your spiritual journey is just something you just walk alone and it's you're less distracted trying to find your answers if there's not other people involved in your life. Yeah, I distract myself. Mm hmm. I do. So. Am I not supposed to? Am I supposed to be trying to 
you got suggestions for me? What's my future? What do I need? What do I need to make my, you know? Well, like you said, I mean, your, your future is going to be kind of what you make of it. Yeah. I think you're choosing to stay on the spiritual path, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It will, you're going to be a completely different person. You're going to evolve so fast. Your taste in relationships will also evolve and change who you want to be with. And you're not, you're going to be on, you're going to want to be with someone who's going to be more like you, who's more inquisitive and open-minded and can take that journey with you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the reasons that marriages kind of fizzle out is because people veer off onto their own paths and they can't relate anymore or one evolves and one doesn't and then they can't be together because they need each other to help each other grow. So I think that's kind of where you're at where that marriage ended and now you're on your own to evolve and then you'll eventually be with the person you're supposed to be with. How long will that take? Probably a couple years. Well, I'm supposed to be with somebody? If you want. I think that's something that you want. I, that always seems to come up okay. for me, for you. That okay. you do want that relationship. But it's got to be the right one. Mm -hmm. And you have to be ready. And that will probably take two years. Uh, that sounds right. Good. <laughs> I could see myself being further along with myself mm -hmm. in two years. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to work on it. We can always improve upon ourselves. And I definitely know, especially right now, I've just been thinking about how much, just how much further along I wish I was. Why? I feel very, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Like a failure. You're not. <laughs> You're always where you need to be at any given moment. Right, but I feel, just feel like I could be so much further along and better with just everything. And you, if, I don't know. You can't, you can't take an infant. This is what Abraham Hicks always says. You can't take an infant and feed it a steak dinner. You have to feed it baby food mm -hmm. until it grows, and then you can... Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I've been on this baby food for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for some steak. You know, oh, you know. We all are. And, you know, for me, this has been a lifelong journey, and this will continue until the day I'm not here anymore physically. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, that's just it is what it is. You're constantly learning. You won't reach an actual end point. You'll just get evolved enough to the a point where you feel like you're not a failure and you feel like you're more in control of things. And you're happier and you have more answers than you did. Um, all right, good. With uh, so with your psychic abilities and, and your clairvoyance, do you also subscribe to astrology like you know, Scorpio <laughs> and Cancer mm -hmm. and Leo? Like, is that part of it or is that completely separate of the two? Like, you know what I mean? Is that yeah. the same um, family tree or are they completely different? I mean, astrology is just another thing that, you know, you can study and work on and believe in. I believe in some basic fundamentals of astrology, but I'm not an astrologer. Uh, I've seen some pretty amazing things, especially with personality. And I know people say, oh, it's very vague. Well, when you do someone's chart, sometimes it can be very specific uh, when you read what, you know, what, what planets are in their houses or whatever mm -hmm. and all of that. So I know people that are like textbook cancers and textbook Virgos. And it's really funny because you can almost predict their behavior kind of by their astrological sign. <laughs> but do I do I sit down and study that and believe in it hardcore? No. Okay. I don't. Okay. I was kind of, I guess, under the impression that maybe it was the same. I have preferences of things that I like to look at and study. So I tend to be more on the um, spiritual side the, the reason I know about crystals and such is because I use them in what I do. And that's, that's a lot of, you know, or I study NDE is because I, I use that for, for apex and such. And that's where my interests are is for afterlife. Okay. Have you d dealt or talked or interviewed a lot of people with NDEs? I've known a couple, like I've run a couple across a couple in my personal life. It's funny because the two that I know, they have serious issues with like their phones and watches and things like that because when they come back, their electromagnetic field is all messed up. So they have a hard time with batteries and battery life and 
things like that. Super interesting. I don't know what to say with all this <laughs> stuff. It's, it's like some of it seems like you could test it, like like actual give real world scientific. And there there tests are people some that of this stuff, and it seems I don't know. There are people that do test it, and I think NDEs are the most fascinating because people will come back and they'll know a different language, or they'll understand math in a way that they've never understood it ever. No, give me that drug, please. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, or they come back with psychic ability or something like that. So. Anything's possible, I think. How did you get involved with doing like so? So there's one <clears throat> one thing to know you have this gift and this ability at a young age and just kind of live with it and deal with it. But how did you go from turning that into I'm going to help people and I'm going to work with apex type people and, and uh, do the things that you do? Well, I spent a good time of my life failing at things like um I would study some witchcraft and then I'd practice it and then bad things would happen and I have to figure out how to fix that. And so <laughs> I spent a lot of my like teenage what? What, years. what did you do and what happened? Oh gosh, I was inviting all kinds of things into my house and um, getting chased after by very dark things just from practice. And, but that's how I know what not to do, you know, when I go into locations now and what risks that you take because when you do paranormal investigating, you have to kind of understand magic because that's what you're using. That's what you're, you're communicating with the dead. So how do you protect yourself from that, you know, and how do you communicate with them? And we have all these high tech gadgets, but you can use old school methods to talk to them as well. So, so yeah, when I was 16 and stuff like that, I was doing a bunch of stuff I wasn't supposed to do and bad things happened. So it wasn't until I was, maybe 18 that the mediumship stuff started to come more to the forefront and then people's relatives would come to me I was sitting in a restaurant one time eating lunch and I was working at a regular job and this server came to me and I just got this flash of her father and then I felt like I was supposed to write down all this stuff on a napkin for her and I left it and I left her a big tip too and I'm like I don't know why I just did that and I never even went back in to see if that made any sense to her but as my life started to move forward I would be at a job and then some lady would come up to me and I'd look at her and I'd be like do you know a so-and-so and she'd be like yeah how do you know that and I'd start rattling off what I knew so it was more like a I felt like an interpreter I guess and then um I started reading cards when I was 35 and um, I've been doing that for 11 years now. So, yeah, <laughs> almost 12. Well, you're almost 47? Yeah. I was doing the math. Like I said, yeah. I did that math <laughs> pillar. Like, I was like, whoa. Yeah, I'll be 47 in April. You definitely don't look. Yeah, Thank you. Know, you. Like, yeah. That's my whole goal in I'm life. Sure. <laughs> that's my whole goal. Significantly younger than me. <laughs> Wow, that's oh, crazy. Wow. Um, really? Oh, thank you. I should come here more often. <laughs> that's right. Bring that good energy. We try to bring that good energy here. Um, Jeez Louise. So when I do um, readings for people, um, if if a spirit comes through, um, like a relative or something, then I'll do, I'll try and communicate with them. It doesn't always happen. I don't have any, I don't feel like I have much control over it. It's just if they come forth. Did a spirit come forth when we were talking? Um, I had, well, other than your dad, early, well, it was last night I got the feeling of a woman that had, that was around you, who was around your age, but I don't know how accurate that is at this point, because I kind of got it as I was falling asleep last night. Okay. Um, but she would have been like either like a sister or a best friend or something, someone you were close to who died just kind of too, well, way too young. Blonde hair. No. See, that's why I didn't bring it up earlier because I wasn't exactly sure. Yeah, I got nothing. Nothing. I have very, I have very little experience with death. Okay. Very little. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very, very little. Like the only people I, kn I think the only people I know that have, that have died that have been close to me are my grandpa and grandma. I was fairly, re you know, few years, within a few years, 
ago. Uh, but that's it. I don't really. Your grandma and your grandpa. Mm-hmm. My grandpa died two years ago, two or three years ago. Wait, did they die pretty close to each other? Yeah, like, yeah, not three. really. A couple years apart. Couple, uh, two two yeah, years. Yeah, two, three years maybe. Three, four years. I don't know how long it was. Oh, yeah, you know, a few years in between. Hmm. Much nicer people. Mm, my grandpa was the sweetest human being. My grandma, she, eh, you know, she was good until she had her stroke, and then she turned into, mm. you know, not so great. That happens, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Okay. <laughs> fine <laughs> it doesn't affect me either he's she's gone they're gone whatever life goes on yeah tries she tries to go on right tries to go on. my cat passed away recently and that's been hard for me because yeah i mean i've had rel- i've had grandparents and uncles and aunts and stuff pass away but yeah um it's funny it's like the first thing you want to look for is a sign and that that communication and that's kind of what i what i want to do for people if i can mm-hmm. um i just just to help them out because it's such a horrible feeling yeah yeah oh it's a car <laughs> um so when i had apex on mm-hmm. they were talking about sally house Ugh, yeah yeah, have you? Do you have any experience with with that or? No. Well, it was an infamous. Yes and no. It's an infamous place. Apparently, pretty pretty evil is what they were. I was probably eight or nine years old when I first heard about Sally House. Okay. I um I was watching it on TV, probably in Unsolved Mysteries or something yeah. like that, <clears throat> and I was like, wow, because I used to watch whatever I could and get in any information I could get when I was little, because I'd have to go to the library to find what I was looking for a lot of times or watch TV. So, I won't go to Sally House. Sally House does have demonic energy in it. And there's people that would argue that with me. But if I refuse to go to a location, that means that there's a, an, a, an aspect where I'm in danger. So, I can't go. I don't want to tap into that energy. Demonic energy is very different than human spirit energy because it can travel instantly. It can find you. Uh, even if you're at your house, it'll jump over to your house and maybe stay a while and then leave or just stay a while. Uh, and I just can't put myself at risk for that. But there's people that go in and go, oh, you know, nothing happened to me or whatever. Hey, great. That doesn't mean it's not there. They just didn't want to mess with you. Yeah. You weren't special enough for I, I guess or something. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Well, sometimes people's own energy can have an effect on the energy that's in the house too. There's people that can ground energy and they won't feel anything and then nothing will bother them because it it takes it and it pushes that energy into the ground. It levels it out and then it's not harmful. So I'm not, I'm more of an antenna, so I don't. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What what is my energy? Or do you not know, or is that what you're saying? You don't really know because my heart is so weeded up. Well, your heart chakra is different than how you process energy or how you can manipulate energy. Okay. Um, The fact that you're an open-minded skeptic, I think that if you allowed yourself to have experiences that you would, you do have a protective guardian type energy as well. I think that you, protective guardians tend to help people like me who need it, like to go into Sally House or something like that. Your energy would protect my energy from something bad happening to me um would i trust that completely no just because demonic energy is so unpredictable well you just they can met me. do a lot well yeah that too <laughs> charlie's asking a question for all those we can't hear you on the mic at all charlie <laughs> it's like dead air on the podcast <laughs> it, just, it doesn't work okay so what are you saying so Laura- if you went there and was like you know like those are type of what you were saying earlier that's the type of energy or type of demons where they could actually possess you and stuff yes that's correct they oh, could possess okay. you they're a lower level when i say lower level it's like a lower vibrational energy angels have the highest vibrational energy that's why a lot of people don't see them they're moving too fast 
you can see lower level energies though they turn they are like black shadows or something like that typically yeah is there and then is there different energies in between low level and high level or is that just, yes okay I think that, yeah probably a whole bunch of different different mm -hmm. yeah levels right mm-hmm Okay. And then there's different types of energy. Like you can have an inhuman. You, you typically have either a human, an in inhuman, or demonic. And then you can go into angelic and whatever. So it typically at haunted locations, you're just dealing with human energy and dark energy. And is all this <clears throat> basically this is spiritual warfare? Is that what it is? It just lower level and higher level battling it out constantly on this this plane of existence that we're we're in, or that they're fighting over, or. I think they are battling it out, actually, that there are things like that that happen. Mm -hmm. And then we're just kind of in the middle, and I think we can get caught up in it, you know. Is there a, so there's like a low level, is there like the lowest level, and then there's the highest level? Like, is there, so you say the high level are these So the highest ones. level would be God. Okay, or, you know. so you do, there is like a, a an overall overall god there is a you believe, believe or you that. think there is an, an overall creator if you will i believe that an intelligence yes absolutely and then there's the opposite of that too right like yes. i mean i mean the opposite of that would be he'd be dumber than a bag of nails but really he'd be really just as smart but just evil instead of or dark instead is there evil is there good and evil or is it just like i from what i've personally experienced i believe that there is good and evil there's people that say no that there's not but i from just i i tell people what i've experienced and that's it that's mm -hmm. all i can really do <laughs> so yes that's that's what i've experienced is it one or the other is there only good and only no evil? i think that there's a lot of gray so i think that there has to be has to be a lot of gray i mean it makes sense yeah i think humans in general are gray <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so is there some and the, okay i learned a lot after we die we just kind of wherever so you i don't know what what would you tell people i guess you i'm not saying asking you for you to tell people to do this but is there suggestions that you would give to people for ways on how to think or and how to think of the afterlife and death and things like that i think people have their own perceptions on how they think of life and death due to their own experiences and their own belief systems. Um, all I can say is, is that there's more out there than people know. And there, I, I believe there's afterlife. Absolutely. Well, okay. So in, in your belief of afterlife, will we, we go one way or another? Like, is it either going to be really good for you or really shitty for you? Or could it be gray or, or like, that's a really hard question to answer because um, it just kind of depends. <laughs> yeah. What kind of person are you? And then do you learn from those experiences and choose to evolve? Do you even choose to go to a heaven plane? Or are you afraid of being judged for something that you've done? And do you stay here and then and you end up being a, a ghost at a haunted location? Yeah, what is a ghost at a haunted location? That's a person that doesn't want to doesn't go. Transition? Doesn't want to transition, doesn't know that they're dead. Uh, oh, or wow. they had a uh, mental illness and sometimes they don't make the switch for whatever reason. And so they still feel like they're trapped there. And there could be, I mean, I'm sure there's other reasons that we just don't know on why they're still there. I noticed though, that if there's a lot of emotional, if someone experiences a lot of negative emotions in a place before they pass away, that negative emotion, I believe can keep them there. So if you look, I mean, when you look at haunted locations, there's tragedies involved usually, right. or you're at hospitals or, you know, asylums or battlegrounds or things like that. That's where you have a lot of spirit energy because there's a lot of negative stuff that happened. What about a place hmm, like where a lot of positive things happen? Are there spots on, on, on this planet that there's like just positive things always happen there and the energy is amazing and, and like there's positive angelic people hanging out there all the time it's just like that's where you want to go like yes i mean there's like places like sedona arizona okay which i've been to which is very high energy high vibration but then you're also looking at the mountains and the geography and um that mountains and things like that can hold in that energy as well and then you look at like maybe a ceremonial place that has positive energy too 
So that can also happen. It's building up that intent of that good energy and feeding into it. So it's whatever you put your intent on is what it turns into. So you can have a, a, a normal house on normal land and then you put a family in there that's destructive or abusive uh, or they start practicing rituals or things like that. Then you're drawing in all that dark energy and then it just stays there until you can either get rid of it or you don't. You can take a house and put a happy family of positive energy and, you know, all of that. And then it turns into this beautiful place that has its own, you know, aura about it that people want to go to. So it's the same. Is it weird being you? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I'm not your average. <laughs> I've had struggles all my life. Yeah. Just with trying to interact with people and things. Oh, yeah, probably people will probably think you're kind of... Kind of weird. A little weird, a little yeah. out there. Or afraid of me. <laughs> I'd rather have them afraid of me, though, then that's fine. <laughs> I like you. I'd hang out with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear about... I want to I be <laughs> told about what kind of energy it's like when I'm about to go into somewhere, if this is somewhere I can sleep or not. Well, you can figure that out on your own. You just have to get rid of your skepticism. Mm. How do you do that? Um, therapy you were saying no I think for skepticism for this kind of skepticism spiritual um, if you had an experience you can't look at it and, and just automatically blow it off I tried I tried when I went to, with uh, Jason and uh, Larry. Larry to Vale House oh, okay yeah we go to Vale often I went down to the basement with okay. them and nothing happened and then they went upstairs and I went back to the basement by myself okay because that was supposed to be the scary spot. That's supposed to be. It's one action. of them. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we're supposed to, you know, the dude comes. I don't know. I was just hoping for something. I was like, give it to me. <laughs> I asked for it. I was down there. I was like, all right. It was, I was sitting down there for I don't know, 20, 30 minutes and nothing. I was like, all right, dude, come on, man. If you're here, show me. Let's go. Spirits aren't like circus monkeys. Yeah, I know. know. <laughs> and that's how I was treating <laughs> them. But I was just frustrated. I was like, uh, show me. I want, like, I'm, I am I'm a skeptic. Gonna... But if you, if you give me something undeniable, yeah, show me. I'll, I'll you know. We'll just wait for that moment because that moment will come. Are you telling me it will or just be hopeful that if it, you it would? If you pursue it, it will. You have to do it enough. It's a numbers game. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. You got to gotta up your that's percent. A, that's a fucking, that's, you, you know, that's. You got to start doing investigations pretty, pretty regularly. Yeah, that's a commitment. It's very much a commitment. That's a yes. commitment. It's a time, yeah. money, energetic commitment. And that's just. We, 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 yeah, no, no guarantees. And no I guarantees. I never see nothing. Like I can't be hunting Bigfoot. I can't be doing that. But people, well, I don't, I don't believe in Bigfoot. People would kill. Well, that's why I'm, I was just using. Yeah, a I know. Scenario, <laughs> but analogy. Yeah, I, but yeah, you can't be doing that every weekend unless you want to. There are some diehards that do every weekend. But um, you can also have your own experiences as well. And if maybe with meditation or something like that you just have to open yourself up i tell people like they'll ask me how do i have more experiences i'm just we'll just put it out there to the universe say it out loud say hey i'm open to some weird experiences and give me a sign and let it be a blue butterfly or let it be a song i hear on the radio a specific song or open a book and then read whatever line that you point to and see if you get an answer christians do that with the bible See, and they say that that's not magic. <laughs> it is. It's a form of divination. Okay. What's that? Uh, like reading cards. Or, okay. Yeah. Divination. Talking to the dead or just seeing the future or any of that. Hmm. I don't know where to go. <laughs> so many different. There's so many different so avenues. So different. We could literally talk about this for days and it would just go on and on and on and into different things. And uh, so when you remote view, you're remote viewing the the dark and the energy, uh, low energy and high energy and we're gray energy. Uh, are you only able to see and communicate or, or, or interact with? with those like you were talking about aliens do they have a certain different energy can you remote view aliens and like see anything alien like that's or what is an alien to you is, it, is that just another form of one of these energy levels or are they completely different entities from another planet or another dimension or aliens are super interesting and i actually don't have a lot of experience with them some people believe that angels are aliens 
that they're just, that's what we call them, our angels. Um, so I've never specifically tried to tap into that energy, but I've have had a couple of dreams about different species of aliens and then I did talk to them. So to me, they're just another being, another life form. Um, they're just very different than us. They just, they communicate telepathically. Some have good intent though, like humans, and some have bad intent, just depending on what they want. What are they doing here? Are we just like some zoo for them to come check out or do Pretty they much. live? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> We're like a Petri dish of, I don't know. Earth is a weird place. Uh, <laughs> it is. I, it, some say the earth is an experiment. So who's live. creating this experiment? The aliens. Are the aliens uh, higher than God? Um, if God is an energy, in my opinion, or an intelligence without a form, and an alien has a form, to me, the intelligence would be higher ranked. Okay. That's just my opinion, though. So the intelligence probably created more than just Earth, probably created everything, whatever. I mean, that's whatever. what I think. Created all the dimensions and, and just... is. Think it, about how we all work together and how things evolve. And Sure, here, but I mean, if there's <laughs> other dimensions and other planets. I mean, if, if we are to believe when you look up at the stars and every star has planets around it and mm -hmm. surely there's life out there somewhere. Well, I mean, we're aliens. To somebody, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I forgot where the hell I was going. <laughs> <laughs> Just the highest energy. But, you know, so like... like do you think the uh, the creator, the highest, whatever, the creator, for lack of a better word, interacts, interacts with uh with us, with anybody, with sure. with any other, really? Sure. Okay. I mean, we're a part of that creation, so yeah. We're connected yeah, but to I mean, it. if there's all these other dimensions, like, why mess? I don't know. It just seems like there's a lot out there. Why mess with? This petri dish, you got you know an infinite. We don't of, have the answer to that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just know. I mean, I I feel that because we're connected to Creator, we're part of that creation that we are linked to it, and therefore, okay, linked to other things. So, I mean, I can get on board with it. I'm we're just, just not as evolved just as like here. other you know species of aliens. We don't really communicate telepathically very often. Yeah, but we got opposable thumbs. Those are cool. <sighs> Those are cool. <laughs> we do have those yeah do you think we'll be able to travel anywhere as this as a human form are we going to be able to travel interdimensionally without dying or probably someday really sure why not i don't know <laughs> i don't know do you get this sense of this this existence here having a, a, an end at some point like is, is there an end of all energy will eventually energy get just explode and go in its infinite directions or is it going to suck in on itself and completely disappear like eventually i don't know what's is there an end point to there's no end point energy to energy in, or no. okay um, it's just what, what it transforms into as far as earth goes, I think anything could happen. We could get hit by a space rock and explode. I mean, who knows? Um, well, at some point we will explode. Like every, yeah, everything's going to every, explode. Right. Like all the, all the stars will go dim. They'll all explode. There'll be no light left in this yeah. universe, galaxy, uh, universe, like everything will you know, cease, at least stop. I mean, but if energy keeps going, it keeps going. It'll just be something else, something different. You know, as far as civilizations go, those die out all the time. All the time. So. Can you talk or interact with past civilizations? I've never, uh, people from... I've never tried. I is that something you'd be interested in going to, like, maybe a, a Machu Picchu or, or a Gobekli Tepe or, or the pyramids or anything? Is that something oh, you'd I'd love be... to go to the pyramids. I've had past lives there, so... Oh, shit. Yeah. To me, that would be... Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, and I feel like if I went to the pyramids specifically, I would connect with that past life. And I'd probably have a lot of memories and things like that associated with that. Whereas like Machu Picchu, where I don't believe I've been before, I would probably pick up on any of the emotionally intense energy like we talked about before. If there were any sacrifices or things, those would probably be the things I would pick up on. And then any spirits that were still there. 
I bet you it's like the like the Mayan ruins, wherever. That would be pretty crazy. Where they, I mean, there was like one time where they uh, sacrificed. I don't know, over a hundred thousand people in like the fact of like two days or something like that. Right. Very violent. Yeah. Violent culture. I would not want to. So surely it's haunted. Um, <laughs> I I don't know if I'd want to go there and experience all those emotions and feel those things because sometimes I'll feel physical pain of how someone's oh. died and that's how I know that they've died in what manner. Uh, so I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> go there. Well, it just hit you randomly if you're driving on the road where somebody got their head decapitated on their motorcycle. Will you feel something like that? Just driving all of a sudden, whoa. That's happened to me before. Um, I drove past a very old farmhouse one time and I immediately knew that someone had been hung, that he hung himself in that farmhouse and I later found out I was right about that. Um, or, or I've picked up on um, an accident or something that I had just passed. I just feel something move through me. Um, or cemeteries. Sometimes I can feel a cemetery if I'm driving, I can feel one starting to get close to me, and I'm like, eh. uh, <laughs> Well, some the, do some entities come up to you and ask for help, like help me pass on, or, or yeah, a lot of times the um, the entities at locations or spirits at locations will want help. We'll ask them for help. I that's not really part of my forte. I'm not extremely good at that for whatever reason. I think I'm more just to communicate. But I do pray for them and I try to help them if I can. Or I ask someone who does do that, like to help them cross over. Because sometimes they just get stuck and they're stuck there for well, a very long time, if not forever. Do they feel time? Do they feel like they like when they've been there for a um, hundred years? Does it feel like a hundred years? Like NDE people will tell you that they don't experience time. That a, a second in heaven is an eternity on earth. Mm -hmm. So I would say no. But, you know, sometimes if like when we talk to spirits and when we're doing investigations, I, I want to ask them more like specific questions or speak to them in a specific way that they would understand for their time period that they were in. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier to communicate you with them that way. You can't use 2020 slang. Right. On the 1920s. Right. Exactly. And sometimes the spirits get offended about how women dress. Oh, that would make sense. Um, Very puritanical. Yes. Around here, back in the formation of our country. Yes. Yeah. And I remember we did a, an event at Bingham Wagner here in Independence. And um, I walked into this woman's room and I'm like, oh man. And all these guys were following me in and she was freaking out because that just wasn't acceptable back then. She wanted all these men out of her private bedroom. That was just unheard of. I'm like, you guys have got to <laughs> either be respectful or just kind of step into the hallway or whatever, just so she's not freaking out so bad. I don't, I said, this is a, a an ignorant realm for me. Like, like I, I like, uh, uh, sorry, I'm tripping over my words. <laughs> I, I'm not accustomed to your world of the energies and, and being a psychic and a medium and all that. And it seems very, you hear like stuff like this from like Haiti and New Orleans with like that kind of culture. And, mm -hmm. and, and also it's, it's prevalent in American culture and, and like the Haitian. Is it, do you find mediums and psychics in every culture around the world? Are there, are there Muslim people that are psychics and Jewish people and, and, and Tibetan people? Like, is it, is this a worldwide phenomena where where people like you have this gift in every single country and and or, or culture, I would say it has to do less with the religion and more with the person individually on whether they have. The I'm gift. not saying that they have those beliefs, right. but that, that those people just happen to be born in that culture. Like like are there, you know, like are there in, like people that are in the Indian culture, like in India, that just have like they know they have this gift. Uh, there are Chinese people that know they have this gift and they just yeah. Yeah, again, I think it depends just on the person, on whether they do this or not. I think people typically that have older souls that have recycled around quite a bit. Um, I've been around a very long time, and it's like each life that I've experienced that I remember, I do this type of work. So it's weird. It's like I kind of fall back into it again over and over again, and I acquire this knowledge, and then I remember some of it when I come back, and it just builds and builds and builds. 
And I don't see why that couldn't happen to anyone else. And you're a soul. So you are a soul that is kind of uh, maybe trapped in this dimension and you just keep coming back. I, I mean, I guess a lot of souls probably do, but you just keep coming back to this one and learn more and more. And just is that is that what you think you? Yeah, I think I'm just on this. Because some people go off and once they're done with this life, boom, they're going to the, the heaven or they're going to a different dimension. But you just keep coming back here. Um, I, I have been to the heaven dimension and this, this current life that I'm in, I didn't want to come back. I was told I had to. Ooh, how come? Um, you don't know yet? There's some reason I'm supposed to be here, so. And it hasn't happened yet, but you think. Not uh, yet. And it will. Do you, do you, do you know when that will happen? Do you think? I thought it would have happened by now. I typically don't live to be this old. I oh, usually, wow. I usually die in my twenties or so. Well, from what? <laughs> Various things. My last life was tuberculosis. Oh. So COVID's kind of been a weird, you know. It's been freaking you out. A little, I mean, I don't feel like, I've never felt like um, COVID was going to affect me in any way. It's kind of weird. It's like I feel outside of it. I still take me precautionary too. measures and all that, but I still feel very outside of it. And I'm like, maybe it's because I died. Maybe they're not doing that to me again. <laughs> they're not going to let me die of a respiratory illness. Um, I don't mean to make light of that, but that's I have a weird way of looking at things. So... Uh, so yeah, I don't even remember where I was going with that, but no, I'm I was I was kind of forced back here this time. Normally, you get a choice. Why well, would you get forced? It would, would it be a punishment, or you haven't it's learned not, enough. It's not a punishment. Is it like a schooling type thing? Like I mean, you gotta you gotta repeat I, the fourth grade. I like, think oh, you gotta get back <laughs> down there. You've missed a couple. I things. mean, I've yeah. I've learned a lot in this life. I can, I kind of came in with an ego thinking I don't need to learn anything else. I'm not even supposed to be here. But I've learned a lot, actually, and that's humbled me quite a bit. I've learned a lot of humility in this life. Like in my previous lives, I've had a lot of money. In this life, I have not. So I think I'm supposed to learn very specific lessons on helping others and serving others and having empathy and things like that. So I think that's part of why I'm here, but it's not all of it. I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to witness something or see something. Aliens. Hopefully. Yeah. If the good ones. Oh, there could be bad ones. There are bad ones. There are. Of course there are. There's <laughs> yeah. bad energy and good energy. <laughs> there are bad ones. Uh, we better hope. Man, with this weird world. Yeah. It could be anything. It could be a battle. This could be a battleground. This is another reason I don't want to see far into the future because I just don't want to know. Can it's, you look far in the future if you wanted to? How far are we talking? It's, I don't know. How far do you typically look huh? or go? Two years. I usually oh, do. She said well, four. That's true. I did see that for four years for you. Um, when I do like the um, the the psychic panels, it's usually one to two years ahead. <sighs> okay. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. But you could go yeah. for you could go a lot further if you wanted wanted to, but you just don't want to. I haven't been given the information to go farther than two years. Till today. You want me to do it, don't you? <laughs> No. I can feel you going, just give us one thing that's going to happen. No, I, that's okay. You know, I don't want to twist your arm. <laughs> Who knows? You know, there's all kinds of weird stuff going on. So, Yeah, I wouldn't twist your arm on anything like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I don't want to see a war happening. Like, I don't want to see a World War III start. I don't want to even deal with that till I have to. It's, it's... <sighs> I, and I don't know. I feel like they're going to show me what they show me mm -hmm. when I need to know it and when it's relevant. Maybe people aren't supposed to know, and that's why I'm not saying anything or doing Because I'll even put out a YouTube video saying, Here, here's my predictions for blah, blah, blah. Not happening. Not happening? Mm -mm. When will it happen again, do you think? I don't know. I do feel that this year things are going to kind of improve. It's just going to take it. A few months. Have you seen things, but you just don't want to comment on it and put it out there? No. Mm -mm. You want I to haven't look? even, haven't even looked. Why? I just don't want to. It's really weird. I just don't want to. Because you're afraid? Do you feel like something, it's going to be something kind of freak you out and you don't I want think, to know? Like well, <laughs> so what freaks me out anymore at this yeah. point? <laughs> the, I mean, you've lived a million lives. Um, like what's, what, what, what would freak you out? It, aliens? I think that things could just be very almost too complicated for me to even understand enough to put it into words on what could happen. 
Okay. I mean, say there was some kind of wave, energy wave that transforms everything. How would I even explain that? Like, of what would happen to people or how it would change everything? What is a... What is the scariest scenario you could think of for for mankind on this here? I I just I just think it would be the destruction of everything would be the scariest. Like man made or or meteor or nuclear. Any of those. Well, those are all scary. But yeah, they're all they terrifying. Are, yeah. <laughs> would you really want to see any of that come in? I don't know. Huh? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not. I wouldn't. No, I, I nuclear war, war, nuclear bombs. I don't want to see. But if if tomorrow they say, "Yo, there's a fucking asteroid the size of Mars coming at us, and there ain't shit we can do about it," I'd be like, "All right." This is what I've noticed about asteroids in the news. So, anytime we hear, "Oh yeah, there's there's something coming at Earth on April 24th or mm-hmm. something," and nothing ever happens. It's because those aren't the ones they're worried about. It's the ones that we hear after the fact. Oh, oh yeah. This one flew just by one yesterday. Just by us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At noon and could have hit us and came this close. And we didn't hear about that before. Either. I, I That does freak me. I was like, wait a minute. What? This thing just passed through? It was like, yeah. It was only a couple football fields away. It could have really done some damage, but it just, just missed us. Like, yeah. Well, that shit happens all the time. And then there's ones that are coming at us from the sun that we can't even see. Yes terrifying i have seen i have predicted like small meteorites well not totally small but have done damage to buildings and stuff i've seen that before yeah that happens but i have in russia recently yeah i mean they happen every once in a while yeah. i mean very you know not frequently but it happens i see those sometimes but Tunguska. i don't see like you know the big school bus size ones that yeah i don't want to see that yeah i don't know i wouldn't you got to think about <clears throat> That must have been one hell of a show when that did happen. When the big one, when the one hit the Yucatan mm-hmm. that wiped everything out. Mm-hmm. That had to be really cool to witness. Those poor dinosaurs. Those poor dinosaurs. <laughs> they were cold hearted bastards anyways. They would have ruled the earth. We would not have been here if they <laughs> yeah, were we, still Yeah, here. we wouldn't like, have been here. That's for sure. But like, Maybe could, that's why they're not here anymore. Could you imagine what that would look? Actually seeing up that big thing. There's not just... That must have been so cool. And then when it hit, apparently... The earth rang for a million years. Wow. Just rang. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Imagine what that would have been like. Just. It's amazing the planets. whole planet wasn't obliterated like into. Well, I think that's what our, they say our moon was yeah. part of that, right? I guess. Part of earth got got hit. And that's what the moon is, is, is one pretty good theory, I think. Hmm. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. And then someone was telling me about, uh, and I, I don't believe them on this, but uh, you know, Pangea, when we were all one big continent as a, as a planet, right? That uh, that uh, the meteor hit hit somewhere and cracked it and split us all up. I don't I don't subscribe to that, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows? It's like a scientist know. Scientists know. Scientists know. Plate tectonics. Yeah, plate Continental tectonics. Drifting. I haven't heard that word since high school. <laughs> <laughs> Continental Tectonic. drifting, all that shit. That's what it was. Uh, or was the creator on his computer going zit, 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 zit? I mean. Who knows? We'll never know until we And I always think of like Atlantis and places like that, like what happened there. Or, you know, and how devastating Pompeii was. Oh, yeah. Like, Jeez. Have you been seeing all that stuff that they've been pulling out of there? Recently? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Like the whole food court thing. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that. Yeah. That's it's, like, oh, yeah. so awesome. Yeah. Yes. And, diff- and the different people that they're you know, the different bodies. And then was it Vesuvius mm-hmm. that they're going to start excavating very soon? I just read that yesterday. Cool. That they're going to start excavating that. And yeah, I love the ancient civilization i do i I know i love to go to the nelson and and like go to yeah go look around the ancient history ancient art section Ooh, what kind of you must get some vibes i do at nelson i do any particular room or area maybe the The egyptian and the the greek roman okay yeah there's a badass uh temple that they moved into there like everything is like this old temple and they just put it in there (gasps) oh 
Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I've got, I might have a picture of it somewhere. I, I always want to touch it because I can feel things like, oh, I get energy when I touch the objects. So I always want to touch it. And I'm like, I can't touch it. <laughs> I know. I didn't know I that. could read it. And I'm like, ah. I went recently in the, uh, maybe the medieval room and they had different knights on these platforms. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, I want to stand up next. So I jumped, I got onto the platform and stand up. And all of a sudden this big alarm goes off. <gasps> I'm like, oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> not allowed that. to be here. Oops. Did you get arrested? No, Did you get in trouble? No, I just put my hands in my pocket and moseyed on out of oh, there. Oh, man. Got a funny look from one of the guards, but I think they knew. Yeah. Yeah, that guy's not. They're probably. Like, you're not the first. Yeah. yeah they're, 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 they're not the first. You're not the first this hour to do that. <laughs> just another idiot thinks he's a knight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Allie, you got any questions for me? I mean, I'm usually asking that question. <laughs> I know. Flipping the script on you. Um, I don't know. I think, I I mean, I guess the thing that I want to know that I already kind of know the answer to is that, you know, doing this podcast, is it fulfilling that, that part of you that you're, you're seeking to fulfill? Hmm. Yes. Yes and no. Um. Yes. Lately, it's been a struggle. It's just, it's, it's been a struggle for me mentally with it because it's just, I'm a, hmm, I don't know. I don't know how to open up and, and talk about it other than just to say, I, I battle with my own demons mm-hmm. and I battle with my own insecurities and my own, I just get in my head a lot and then I start spinning. Mm-hmm. And I just, this is one thing I have to, I have to make it keep going, but then I'll get in a spot where I'm like, I'm just going to, should I keep doing it? Should I keep going? Yeah. But I'm like, no, I have like, it, it's just, there's a lot to it. Yeah. And so, yes, I get a lot from it and it does kind of fulfill that. But then the other part, it like adds more, I don't know. Again, you mentioned therapy earlier. And yeah. I definitely do need to talk to somebody just about with my own inner thoughts, my own inner battles and fights and, and, and shit. But. Yeah, it is giving me what I need to do. Like, sometimes I don't always want to do these. Mm-hmm. But then when I do do them, I'm so I'm like, oh, why did I not want to do that? Like, I'd like, I, yes, that was yes. so fun. Like, this, it brings you alive. It gets you out. I mean, this, don't forget, this is your passion. You want it, you know, you have to do this. And just because a lot of it is hard work, because mm-hmm. this is basically all me. Like, I'm get booking all the guests myself, figuring out who I want and setting that up. It's just, it's, right. and then promoting it and trying to promote it and then, you know, trying not to get discouraged or overly encouraged and mm-hmm. just, just trying to keep, keep in mind why I do this and what do I do it for. And it's, you know, it's not clearly not to make money. I don't make a fucking cent on this. Mm-hmm. I lose money on it. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's for me. Like it's right. No one's going to tell me what to do. You can't cancel me. You can't fucking cancel me. That's um, right. You know, this is my shit. That's right. And so, yes, uh, it does fulfill me in a lot of ways, but then a lot of other ways it is opens up a whole nother door of. It can be an energy drain, too. Yeah. Yeah. I just took like so like I said, this is season two. I didn't I wasn't I only call it season two because I took like a month off (laughs) because I was so drained. Like I've been doing this almost every single weekend for almost three years. And again, I was just struggling with my own motivation mm-hmm. and just all this other shit. It's like, I got to take, I'm just, I got to break. I need a break. I can't have, I get anxiety if I don't have enough guests booked out. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, shit, am I going to have a, like, I need it. I need to, am I going to be able to put one out? Am I going to be able to put another episode out? Oh, people are waiting on it. And it's just all shit in my head. And I'm like, it just, I just started getting too much anxiety from, I was like, I just need to just step away and just not do it. But now I'm back. And I'm re-energized and ready to go. Good. I'm booked out till April 4th, every Sunday till awesome. April 4th is booked. Great. And that alleviates so much anxiety. And then also, yeah, so I, so I don't know. It's, I, yeah, I don't know if I gave you I totally understand answer, what but. you're saying. Because <laughs> I, I got like that with my YouTube channel. Um, and I posted a lot of paranormal stuff on my YouTube channel. But I was doing readings on there for a while. Just general Zodiac readings. Okay. And they were very helpful to a lot of people and I did get reward out of it. But at the same time, right. it took so much out of me that I stopped doing them. I just couldn't energetically do it anymore. And I felt so guilty about it, but I just, it was, it was making me physically ill. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the issue I run into with my energy. So I just kind of let that go and 
you know, if I want to make an educational paranormal video on like how to raise a psychic child, which is on there and, and things like that, then I'll do that because that's like a one-time thing where I mm-hmm. feel like I have the energy to make that video that day. But otherwise, I don't. So It's a struggle being a, a quote-unquote content creator. It is. It's It's... You know, did you get into this because you want to create content or did you just get into it because you wanted to? Mm-hmm. And that's the struggle. I It's not really a struggle. That's what I, I just want to do it because I want to do it. Mm-hmm. But then you do get to this point where like, well, I I do want people to listen. I do want people to watch. Like, mm-hmm. it is for me. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, it is, you know, screw you. I'm going to do it whether you like it or not. But I do want. You and your friends who are listening right now, tell a friend about this. Right. Subscribe to it. You, know? <laughs> right. you don't even have to listen. Just subscribe. Let me see the number. Yeah. Per, you know. <laughs> the number. I just want to yes. see the number. I don't even you know. Just. Yes. <clears throat> that number is pretty addicting too. It's it was like, when I first started. I don't even look at my numbers no, anymore. I, I, I have just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Whatever. I just put it up. Whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. I have some great YouTube followers that are just amazing and that will just follow me. And they're, they're just totally supportive of whatever I'm doing. And I Mine love those not. people. Um, <laughs> I have some people that like <laughs> hate my guts and, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I'm not I'm not here on this planet to to kind of I don't know. I have I have some specific reasons why I'm here that I do things. So. If people get it, people get it, then great. And I'm helping. And if they don't, then they'll get their information somewhere else. This was a great conversation. Thank you. I agree. Um, what would you like people to know or how can they find you? Like, I'll leave this little spot here for you to um, pimp you yourself. Pimp myself. Pimp Apex. Oh my gosh. Pimp whatever you want. And all my info's on that sheet I emailed to you. <laughs> I don't have any. Oh okay, so Facebook, the Apex Paranormal is our Facebook page. Um, we have a website as well, um, Apex Paranormal, I guess, of Kansas City is where you can find us and find all of our bios and things. Um, and then YouTube, Apex Paranormal, and we're doing the Apex Chronicles, um, which is like our own little paranormal show. Mm-hmm. And you can see me do walkthroughs of locations on there too. Um, and my... Facebook is 11th Messenger. I don't really do a whole lot on there. And I do have my YouTube channel still up, which is 11th Messenger. And that's with the number 11. And you can see some of the things that I've done and, and just information and weird, my weird experiences. Uh, I guess that's everything. And then we um, also, gosh, we handle bookings for Vale Mansion for paranormal investigations as well as... Um, I always space on the name. We have a couple new ones, so Blue Springs. They'll figure it out. They'll find your stuff and figure it out. Dillingham Lewis. Thank you, Spirit Guides. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Dillingham Lewis in Blue Springs. Um, you can also book there to do investigations. And then we hold events as well. And and um, hopefully, I know that there's going to be Paracon going on in Omaha in April. So I'm assuming we'll oh, be nice. there. I haven't heard yet, but we like to do that one. So, all right. Well, let's tap into my father. Let me uh, give him a piece of my mind. We'll get the hell out of <laughs> here. You can really do that at any time. Just tell him. Yeah. Oh, well, he knows. Okay. <laughs> he then he knows if he knows yeah. I've talked. Yeah, yeah. I've never called him out. There's there's something about saying it out loud. Like anytime you want to call upon a spirit or you talk to an angel or something, you have to do it out loud. It can't just be an internal thing. That's got to be annoying for them. I, you know, they're sitting and they're, they're, you know, kicking back, playing a game of poker, eating a sandwich. And all of a sudden some dude's like, you know, uh, my, my, my dad's name was uh, Marvin. Hey, Marvin, get your broke ass, dead ass over here real quick. And all of a sudden he's ripped from his poker game and has to come in here real quick. I'm like, listen, here you piece of so-and-so. So it's weird. When you said his name, I got the feeling of feeling ashamed. Yeah. He should be ashamed. He should be ashamed. He should be ashamed. You're a piece of shit. Hard to make it up to you now. Oh, he had his chance. Yeah. He had his chance. He had a he had a daughter uh, many, 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 many years after me and my brother. And... After he died, she found me on Facebook. Or no, no. MySpace. She found me on MySpace, I believe. This is how long wow. that shit was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a way back machine here. Um, 
<laughs> and yeah, and she wanted. She's like, oh, you know, your dad, you know, Marvin was, you know, your dad, or you know, I'm his daughter. And so we we talked a little bit, and then one day I was I was just kind of on there going, you know, she made a post about him. Oh, I miss my daddy. He was so great. Blah blah. I go. I knew it was a piece of shit. I go. That dude left two young children. Never gave them a single dime or a phone call or a birthday card or mm-hmm. nothing. Oh, and because and he did the same thing to her. He he was there. Had a, had her, and for when she turned like three or four, he just abandoned her too, and then came back into her life for like a year and a half or so before he died. And for that year and a half, all of a sudden, he's like this fucking saint to her. Mm-hmm. She was like, oh, you know, he was there for, you know, gave money for my daughter and blah, blah. I'm like, I don't, he was a piece of shit. He was mm-hmm. a piece of shit. I don't care. And then she threw this, and then she got in a big old stink. I will not speak, uh, talk to you. You were speaking ill of the dead. And then she makes this big fo- Facebook post, MySpace post. If anybody associates with him, you're dead to me. He was talking ill of the dead. I'm like, oh, who cares? <laughs> You talk, I don't care if he's dead. He was a piece of shit when he was alive. He's a piece of shit now. If, if someone's a piece of shit, it doesn't matter if they were dead or alive. You can still talk shit on them. You can still say what they were. I don't care if you're dead. You were a piece of shit. And some people don't find... It's only when they know that something's going to happen to them that they try and seek right. absolution. Or and I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know if he knew something was coming or not. I, Maybe he didn't know consciously. Okay. But yeah, he's, yeah, so... I haven't talked to her in a long time since then, since I called her daddy mm-hmm. at what he was. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways. But you know, when you're meditating, you might run into him. You don't know. <laughs> like, uh, or some, some kind of DMT experience or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny when you were saying sometimes demons or, or, or dark things can chase you. I did have one of those a few years ago, but we don't need to talk about that. All right, <laughs> Allie. <laughs> This is great. I really appreciate you doing this. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Well, uh, I'll see you again in two years and then in four years. And uh, we'll let you know if I uh, have mended fences with that ex. You're just going to evolve and you'll be okay with a lot of things that you're not okay with now. Hmm. It's all about evolution. I know it's hard to see your future self, but. No, I can see it. I can see me getting to a point where I'm just like, I just don't even care anymore. Whatever. You're just, whatever. Yeah. You're just another whatever yeah on that note on everybody that note. <laughs> this was neander talk podcast <laughs> i am ryan west uh, like subscribe follow her follow me follow, follow the us. earth yep whatever that means that's it we're out here bye yeah.